So hello, my colleagues, and I hope everyone had a great holiday um, yesterday. And um, I want to pick up right here where we left off talking about Molson Ale. Um, so um, we were talking about their cash flows, right, uh, when we left off up here. So a little more than a year later, right, uh, in 2017, Molson reports that in 2016, it had generated $1.1 billion, and here's the operating cash flows that are are going to be important to us, okay? Um, from the prior year, driven mostly by the Miller Coors acquisition, in terms of free cash flow, the company generated $864 million. Uh, and we'll talk about free cash flow, too. You may want to review that on your own, too, all right? You may want to review a free cash flow. <clears throat> um. So that was up also, although the company had a long way to go. So it appears, if, if you read this, it appears that the company was on track to, and, and again, these are the magic words with anything. You want to create value. It's anything you do. When you get a job, you're going there, they want you to create value. So you want to create value, and who, who are you going to create it for? Obviously the shareholders, right? You're going to create it for the shareholders, because they're the owners, like me, right? This is why I don't pay, uh, I don't get dividends in Amazon.com because Amazon uh, takes that money and reinvests it in the company, but the stock goes up. Okay. So this chapter is going to explain, right, how, what we're going to, our direction is, uh, we're going to identify incremental cash inflows and, out, uh, and outflows, in and out, right, that managers must identify. And so this is the main thrust that we're heading for, all right. And once again, they have nice, uh, I don't know if these are still active, but, you know, these are probably a little old, but you can probably, this is, you know, they may be still uh, clickable. They always have nice sources in uh, this book. All right, so uh, let's talk about cash flows. All right, so uh, Chapter 10, which you should have had in 330, we uh, that talked about the capital budgeting process, right? Uh, so, um, what we're going to look at, um, is net, uh, net cash flows. And this is the net of incremental after tax cash flows over a project's life. So this is the sum, right, of the incremental after tax cash flows. So, and then we're going to look at the incremental. So these are important words that we're seeing here, net and the incremental represents the additional after-tax cash inflows or um, outflows or inflows that will occur only if the firm makes the investment. So the, the company had a, a project's uh, net cash flow of the, uh, the sum of the incremental cash inflows. Okay, so those are the sum. So we'll highlight that because these are important words. And the incremental cash inflow is the additional after-tax cash inflows that will occur if you make that investment. So if you go to college, right, and that's an investment, you're gonna, your salary is going to go higher, right? So that would be your after-tax cash flows, outflows, right? You're going to get, or I guess your inflows, you're going to get uh, more salary. Okay, so uh, as noted, we focus on cash flows rather than Accounting figures, because cash flows directly affect the firm's ability to pay bills. Remember the old saying, right? Cash is king, right? All right. So um, I think you may be taking a class in uh, ethics, okay? And uh, if uh, if you haven't, uh, we're just going to go through this uh, box a little bit here, just to give you an introduction to ethics, all right? So a core concept in economics is marginal analysis, right? And now we're talking about a little bit about economics, right? Decisions shouldn't depend on incremental costs and benefits. Costs already occurred that cannot be recovered are called sunk costs, okay? And they're irrelevant. There's nothing you can do about those, right? Those were sunken in... Uh, and those go into the cost, but sometimes businesses will um, actually consider sunk costs. 
And uh, this is an interesting thing if you want to read this about the Concorde. So long after the uh, Concorde tra uh, supersonic transport jet proved a commercial disaster, the British and French uh, governments continued funding it because no senior official wanted to concede the project had been folly, that it wasn't paying off, right? People didn't have the money. So uh, when considering project renewal, managers have an ethical duty to focus on net, net present value. And these are the magic words. If you remember these from chapter, I think it was 9 or 10. How to compute net present value. Again, if you haven't done that, you should, or don't remember, I'd go back and review chapter 10. And avoid letting emotional factors, you don't want to let emotion get into your investment decisions. So, uh, so another example here is... Uh, you know, uh, sports teams, they signed a marquee player to a long-term contract, then stick with him no matter what. So uh, this guy, he won the Heisman Trophy. and But you can go through this. Uh, he got a four-year guaranteed contract. So I don't think things worked out too well. The first year, he did well. And he started getting injuries. And uh, basically, they, they re-signed him to that 50 year. And uh, they called it the biggest blunder in uh, NFL history for keeping him. So, you know, you, you don't want to make emotional decisions. That's basically what this is all about. So he got hurt again. He got a concussion. Okay. So uh, anyway, ethically, you got to make a decision that, you know, you don't want uh, do things that uh, are going to affect the uh, shareholders and, and act them uh, irrationally or emotionally. So you see what it says here. Recommitting to a losing project for emotional or reputational reasons. And here it is. Can destroy shareholder wealth. Okay. And you don't want to do that. That's the most grievous thing you can do. And again, here's some nice little blurbs. So now we're going to talk about uh, major cash flows. Okay, so we'll get into So there's going to be uh, different cash flow types, all right? So what there's going to be uh, three different cash flows here, okay? So we're going to talk about three different cash flows here, of course. In the typical pattern, the initial investment is a uh, net cash flow that occurs at the beginning so you can see, here's the first cash flow, right. initial. It's the money you put in, right? Your investment. At, and that's at the beginning, the very beginning of the project. And then the operating cash flows are what comes out over the life of the project. And they could be positive and negative, of course, but I think in this book they always turn out to be positive. And then, of course, you're going to have a terminal cash flow at the end, now, what is a terminal cash flow? Maybe the project is over, okay? And uh, you were working on this project, let's say, uh, that um, you had bought some equipment for. And now you don't need this equipment anymore, right? And so now you, se you can sell this equipment, right? And that occurred at the end of the project, so you got some money back, right? All right, so let's say you started a business and it didn't work out that well, so you, you would sell the equipment and get some money back. That would be a terminal cash flow. So you see what it says. In most situations, the terminal cash flow will be a uh, net inflow. However, for any particular investment, any of these net cash flows could be inflows or outflows, since each is a function of the sum of incremental cash inflows and outflows. So all they're simply saying here is that you could lose money or make money. All right. So, so again, here's here's um, here's figure eleven one, and here's the money you initially invested, and here is your um, cash flows coming in, right? You notice that's negative, right? Because the money came out of your pocket to start the business. Here's the cash coming in, and the last year you also made ten thousand, but you your project ended. And again, you sold some equipment as your terminal cash flow. So your total 
cash flow in the last year, year 10, is 35000 the sum of these two. Okay? So, uh, remember, here's the initial cash flow. Here's the three, operating and terminal. I don't know if they'll let me highlight this. Let's see. So, so those are them. So that this is an important. Remember, this just sets the table for us on everything. Okay. So, all right. So I'm gonna, uh, um, I'm gonna pick up here. We'll pick up here, and uh, on the next uh, video, because we're about 11 minutes in now. You should be reading these yourself. And again, if you ever have any questions, feel free to email me. I guess I'll see you in a, in a week or so. Right. So uh, we'll pick up here with replacement or expansion decisions. And this is an important concept, all right? All right, everybody. Have, be, have safe, be safe. Um, you know, live by the rules with this virus we're living with. It's horrible virus. And, uh, you know, keep washing your hands, wearing your masks. Don't get sick. It doesn't pay. All right. Happy New Year to everybody.